Diane Coyle, Cogs, and Monsters, What Economics Is, and What It Should Be. Welcome to the summarized world of ECOGS and Monsters, a thought-provoking journey through the evolution of economics and its implications in today's society. Through this exhilarating book, Diane Coyle captures the transformations within economic thought, from its accused abstract nature to its current empirical movement. As we navigate this summary, take note of the crucial themes like the role of macroeconomics versus microeconomics the influence of dominant journals on shaping economic discourse, and the importance of embracing economic history in educating future economists. Moreover, grasp the book's insights on the intersections between politics, power, institutions, and economic policymaking while exploring the limitations and potential of economic models in the era of digital technology. Evolution of Economics Economists have responded to criticisms of their field after the 2008 Great Financial Crisis. The field has changed significantly, integrating psychology, technology, institutions, history, and culture into its analysis. Economics now focuses on empirical research, aided by big data and computing power, and emphasizes specific microeconomic issues. Most economists work on the ground, seeking better ways of doing things in government or private sector contexts. The movement toward practical economic analysis has replaced theoretical and abstract approaches popular in the past, and the field's evolution positions it positively for future growth. Redefining Economics Economist calls for a narrative approach to complement the mathematical technique prevalent in economics journals. The use of rational concepts such as rational markets and rational prices assumes the biggest flaws in economic prediction. Economists' work must expand beyond hard analysis by including qualitative methods from social sciences. Intellectual groupthink runs the risk of limiting economists' impact and creativity. Changing Economics Education Economics education has undergone changes in response to complaints from students regarding lack of relevance. Greater emphasis is now given to economic history. Instead of just teaching theories, students are taught how to apply them to real-world issues, embedded with politics, power, and institutions. The return to a more subjective, political economics, considers how economics interacts with a particular place and time. This shift addresses employers' concerns about narrow understanding of the subject, lack of economic history knowledge, and inability to communicate with non-specialists. The Political Nature of Economics The 2010 financial crisis in Southern Europe demonstrates that economists are not politically neutral, despite their self-proclaimed technocratic stance. While they view their role as objectively providing means to achieve economic goals, they ultimately take ideological stances, often favoring market-friendly policies. This bias stems from their predominantly white middle-class backgrounds. Moreover, economists tend to reduce everything to monetary value, using metrics that involve subjective adjustments and uncertainty. Therefore, students of economics should learn to interpret statistics more carefully, bearing in mind the limitations of these metrics. Economists themselves must improve their ability to assess and communicate uncertainty, particularly when it comes to digital activities. Ultimately, the author argues that economists must recognize the political nature of their work and its inevitable impact on society. The Limits of Pareto Efficiency Economists' over-reliance on Pareto efficiency theory overlooks the difficulty of comparing utility effects across a population, leading to the neglect of real-world conflicts and dilemmas. This book advocates the need for a more comprehensive toolbox through institutional and behavioral economics, especially in light of pressing issues such as climate change and inequality. Without revisiting welfare economics foundations, our ability to address today's policy questions will be restricted. The book argues that Pareto efficiency's technocratic and utilitarian approach is a major theory that often disregards moral and political considerations. The theory suggests that any action that benefits one person without harming anyone is desirable and maximizes utility. 
However, economists tend to overlook the complexity of measuring and comparing utility across a population, assuming away real-world conflicts and ethical dilemmas. This leads to limited policy solutions and negative outcomes for society. Furthermore, the book argues that cost-benefit analysis is also a blunt instrument in a modern complex economy where issues of distribution require political judgment. Behavioral and institutional economics offer a more comprehensive toolbox for practitioners. The book advocates for revisiting welfare economics foundations, focusing on society as a whole, and redefining economic goals to address pressing issues such as climate change and inequality. Otherwise, the negative outcomes of some economic positions could lead to populist political movements taking advantage of them. The 2008 GFC and Lessons Learned the 2008 GFC revealed that the financial markets mirrored modern regulatory attitudes and trusting economic theories. One such theory included the pricing of options, which created a false sense of confidence. Economists need to recognize that their theories can encourage gambling and speculation. Additionally, introducing market forces into government-funded services can distort employees' motives, thereby eradicating intrinsic public service. Traditional policymaking fails to acknowledge the expected rational or behavioral response to policy changes. The Paradox of Digital Economy As digital technology continues to transform the world as we know it, it poses a unique challenge to traditional economic models. The key difference lies in the upfront investment required for intangibles in the digital realm, resulting in winner-takes-all dynamics and a preference for network effects. Unlike in manufacturing, labor costs are not in proportion to revenue, and data becomes more valuable as it accrues into larger blocks, making it difficult for new competitors to enter the market. As a result, regulators and economists must adapt their approach to foster broad societal benefits while addressing the monopoly power of big tech companies. A revolution in regulation, like that of the early 20th century trust busting, may be necessary. The Role of Economists in Shaping Policy Economists may not be perfect, but they have a crucial role in helping governments and economies resist short-sighted policies. By putting monetary values on things, they make implicit trade-offs explicit, making them the grown-ups in the room. Although capitalist systems continue to struggle with equality and environmental issues, economists have an essential part to play in addressing these problems. They need to be clearer about what they can contribute and be bolder in being heard. The recent financial crises have taught economists valuable lessons, and they are now advising on what works best in response to increasing demands for change. Heterodox ideas are emerging in subfields of economics to address environmental and inequality issues in response to current problems that have a lasting effect. As we conclude our tryst with the cogs and monsters, we realize that economics has come a long way since its earlier criticisms. The field is not static and has progressively embraced the impacts of psychology, technology, history, culture, and institutions, among other factors. Thus, economists need to revisit the fundamentals and purpose of welfare economics, explore the nuances of the digital economy, and engage with the world to make meaningful contributions advocating for a better communication of their expertise and a mix of humility and boldness. Coyle demonstrates how economics is crucial in addressing pressing global challenges like inequality and environmental degradation. As readers, we leave with an enriched understanding of economics, its evolving nature, and its capacity to adapt and shape the future.